Woo! Hey, Uncle Doug. Uncle Dan. Uh, I hear mm. that uh, the 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 that there is such a thing huh? as celestial bodies. Have you heard of this? <laughs> I've heard of it. Have you, have you, have you, are you aware of this? I haven't seen one in the mirror in a long time. If you look up at the firmament, mm -hmm. which, as we all know, is a lens-shaped uh, <laughs> dome <laughs> over the Earth. Right. It's over true. Over the it's flat true. Earth. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's there true. are uh, there are bright lights up there. One in particular. Yeah. Uh, and frankly, I want to know how to worship that motherfucker. <laughs> well, you know, guys, maybe maybe I've got something something for what ails you today. Uh, nice. <clears throat> yeah, and it, it may not be celestial bodies, but there will be celestial corpses. So strap oh, in. Oh, nice. Uh, that you, they all these always go well. Yeah. All right. So so let's let's we're going to talk today about some some folks, and you know, guys. We've met quite a few folks through our weekly internet radio show over the past year and a half, and good and bad, but mostly bad, or maybe mostly bad. <laughs> maybe more accurately, mostly so-so people duped by seriously bad people. But the glue that binds all our stories together is, of course, the idea of some god, the supernatural, the irrational, and often the insane, but, but it is a very sticky glue indeed, and, and is often the case that glue is blood glue. A glue made of blood. So <laughs> we've discussed a lot of cults from the Church of God with signs following to the People's Temple, the Nuwabian Nation, to Heaven's Gate, and even something called the Catholics. But as long as Al Gore keeps his internet open, we could have one of these gruesome <laughs> chats once a week for all the forevers. So nu numerous are the constellations of terrible ideas and men. And yes, it's almost always men, but not exactly always. We're looking at you, PZ Knight. Uh, who use them to rob, fuck, and murder their sadly all-too-willing flocks of credulous, vulnerable, and oft-times desperate people. So this week, I'm going to introduce us to just such a sad mess of belief, money and tragedy. And I think the important lesson to take from this week's special guest is that no matter how benign you may think it is, when you spin lies about a perfected eternal afterlife that Joseph Smith himself claimed you would kill yourself to catch a glimpse of, you are potentially setting in motion events like those we will be discussing today. So, yeah. Uh, there's, before there's we dive in, there's what, always a body count. There's there's almost always a body count. There's enough of a body count to, to to give one pause. But before we dive into all the comedy, I don't know if we three have ever had an open discussion about what the di what difference there is, if any, between a religious a religion and a cult, or, or if it matters at all, really. It's I mean, a that, you know what I, I on thank God I'm atheist I've had a, some in depth discussions about that difference uh, right. it's tricky though it's not it's not an easy cut and dry sort of thing you, there there are different ways of making that distinction right I, it, for my I, my thinking has always been if it's a few people it's a cult if it's a lot of people it's a religion that's how <laughs> that's how demographers actually talk yeah about it. They, they talk in terms of membership numbers right. Right. Uh, well, Steve, uh, uh, Robert Lifton's definition, which I'm paraphrasing a little bit that I've always liked, is a religion becomes more cult-like based on how difficult it is to leave. Right. Yeah, that's that's hmm. a. Uh, there are a lot of like sociologists will talk about how a, a a cult has. Yeah, if it's difficult to leave, if you are going to be shunned by the people who you, you most admire, one if if you don't conform. Right. You know, it, the tighter the controls. The yeah. more it, it, the more cult like it becomes, right? And I think I think you and Frank might have discussed Stephen Hassan's bite model <clears throat> mm. once or twice, which I think I'll put it in the show notes. I think that's a very useful uh, a, a way to kind of establish if what you are thinking of joining or what you suddenly found yourself born into suddenly uh, is you know is more cult like. So it's behavior control, information control, thought control, emotional control. Um, but, uh, and, and urinary tract <coughs> control, right. And, and, uh, breath control. Right. So, uh, which is anal anyway, <laughs> uh, but I, it's I'm also, not sure. it's also a system of control in a way, because if you, it, cult is negative, religion is positive. So the moniker cult is often used to disparage while religion is used to kind of bolster. Right. right. And one, and one like cultish. Like, you know, when Frank and I were having a discussion about were we raised in a cult as more as former Mormons? Yeah, it, it 
you know, I reluctantly came to the conclusion that, yeah, it kind of is. I mean, it's it's controlling enough that that's basically what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then what's great is that you get to hear some cult religions disparaging other religions as cults. Right. Like, yeah. you'll, you, you can definitely get a Mormon talking about, talking, like, very denigratingly about Scientology and that cult. Exactly. Which oh, is our mother, like, our mother used to scream about the Moonies all the time. Like, how could they not yeah, know they no, were in a cult? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it's a very subjective term. But, uh, but I think today's uh, uh, subject, any way you slice it, pretty much qualifies as a, as a cult. So, so let's jump in. Let's meet the Ordre du Temple Solaire, or more precisely, l'Ordre International Chevaleresque. De tradition solaire. Thank Nailed you, it. French listeners. Merci. Or our French listeners just shot themselves. Or <laughs> as numerous press reports and police departments eventually recorded them, the Order of the Solar Temple. Fair warning, Ooh. which as listeners likely know by now is pretty boilerplate for our podcast. There will be graphic descriptions of violence in this segment. So, we, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so the Order of the Solar Temple was founded by a couple of highly suspicious personages, Joseph de Mambro and Luc Jure in Geneva, Switzerland in 1984. Those are like Bond villain names, right? So mm. totally. Sums up with these two. So Jure was a Belgian born in the Congo, formerly of the same name, who first trained as a real doctor before chucking all that to become a, quote, doctor of homeopathy. So not a doctor at all, since, as we all know, water can't remember if you yelled at it or not. So (laughs) as woo can be the slipperiest of slopes, covered as it is in essential... Oops, I added an extra E in there, in essential. It's an an appropriately Utah accent and version of that. So essential oils. He, he, He also became a believer in and lecturer on all things paranormal. Mm. So through this community of kooks and mid- mid-level marketers, he made acquaintance with Joseph de Mambro, who had, among other things, in his long spiritual quest, long been a Rosicrucian. What is a Rosicrucian? That's an excellent subject for a whole segment another time. But yeah, we, we've, we've dipped our toe in Rosicrucians before. They keep popping up. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, they keep popping up. But it's, it's basically like a Freemason but with more secrets about ancient wisdoms and a very deep belief that their magic is real. Right. So, but it turns, out that it, uh, it turns out that those secrets are so secret that they keep them even from themselves. I think you're describing Mormons. <laughs> well, <laughs> now we know, we know that our, our friend Joseph borrowed very heavily from a, a secret society. So this is not, this is not, uh, this is familiar to Mormon ears. So, yeah. so they have robes, handshakes, secret orders, etc. Uh, Demambro was apparently influenced, very influenced, by a very famous Rosicrucian and the subject of my segment just a couple weeks back, the wickedest man in the world, black magician Aleister Crowley. Um, and I swear, it's almost alarming how many times the dots between fully disparate topics we cover connect, right? <laughs> it's, it, it, it turns out that the entire world of our subject matter is one pinball machine, and we right. just bounce off of everything left and right once we set that ball into I'd, motion. Well, I'd, ask, I'd ask where it ends, but we all know it ends with the Jews. Of course it ends with the Jews. I mean, we could just say, welcome to the how-to heretic, the Jews, the end. Yes. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's, this thing is less like a bulletin board covered in yarn and more like a sweater. You know, the, yeah. the yarn just <laughs> loops around and intersects until you've got a, a perfectly good sleeve of crazy. So a nice cable knit nut, nutballism. Yeah. So as we discussed in that segment on Crowley, these old esoteric semi-Christian, but mostly syncretic, meaning like just cobbled together out of all kinds of shit. These secret orders have levels of advancement and initiate must pass through as they earn and yes, pay for the privilege of higher rank and greater mystical knowledge. <clears throat> this not only impressed one L. Ron Hubbard, mm. whose eyes lit up like a slot machine when he considered a pay-as-you-go path to enlightenment, <laughs> but it was of great interest to Jure and de Mambro uh, as well, especially because if you're the one who starts the new order, you can just tell everyone you already ran that spiritual obstacle course, so you're good to go. So yeah, exactly. These wannabe wizards uh, start the order of the Solar Temple in Geneva, Switzerland in 1984. And they immediately attracted followers from the, the worlds of homeopathy, 
UFO and par- paranormal enthusiasts, and dabblers in a variety of esoteric orders. So basically all the same world, right? Yeah. Shouldn't and be, but yes. It pretty much is. And, and they did indeed place themselves atop three levels of advancement for their members. The first, the Brothers of Parvis. Everybody loves Parvis. Uh, second. My dog the, had Parvis once. The, yeah. And that was the first order of the uh, Solar Temple. So, right. Second, the Knights of the Alliance, which sounds very cool. Who doesn't like a good alliance? Yeah. Or a good then, night. Or a good night. Good night. <laughs> That's what that is, comes from. Mm-hmm. You were wishing someone a good uh, soldier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then one would finally advance to the Brothers of Ancient Times, which... <laughs> After those first two sounds kind of lame, doesn't it? So, <laughs> so other than Jure and Dimambro, the group was uh, administered by the Synarchy of the Temple. Uh, the top 33 dudes in it were called the Elder Brothers of the Rosy Cross. So That's a Rosicrucian reference. That is. Hmm. So it's basically Dungeons and Dragons for bored middle-aged Swiss people and Quebecois. So, uh, yeah. But wait, there's more. But the, but the difference is that their magic is totally real. It's totes real. Dun- Dungeons uh, and Dragons is just a silly game for children. Yeah, it's totally true. And, and in addition to all the fancy names and titles, these people had costumes. So <laughs> I, I think Stanley Kubrick must certainly have been a member because their art direction is right out of Eyes Wide Shut. It's <laughs> fancy red and white hooded robes, uh, red ceremonial rooms hidden behind... Hinged bookshelves down yes. secret passages. Yes. And even a ritual, a ritual sword that DeMambro <coughs> said was his when he was a crusader in a former life a thousand years past. A hundred percent. I love it. I'm <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. It's, well, I, it's going to get... I am on board. It's going to get better before it gets worse. Um, nice. And that brings us to the next fascinating fact about these druids of the MTV age, it, which is they said they structured their church and their chivalrous society... On that of the Knights Templar. Now, who were the Knights Templar? Again, a great subject for another segment that we'll get to at some point. But in brief, they were a Catholic military order formed in the 12th century that took in donations with which they built almost a thousand strongholds and accommodations for Christian pilgrims to safely visit the quote unquote holy land. I hate that term, as well as being highly accomplished uh, Muslim killers of the first order. Yes. So, and were s- and. Hiders of the uh, the holy of the holy grail, grail, grail. and Dan uh, Brown can tell you where it is, but you have to solve his <laughs> riddles three. His <laughs> riddles three. They were so successful in doing this work and took in so much money that they became. Uh, this is an interesting fact. One of the world's first multinational corporations. Uh, ah. Yeah. Anyway, the tide turned against them. The king of France tried to destroy them rather than pay back the money he owed them. A lot of them got burned at the stake, which, as we all know was an occupational hazard for anyone that happened to live within 500 miles of the closest Catholic in the Middle Ages. And then the Pope disbanded, disbanded them forever. Amen. Anyway, right. the Order of the Solar Temple claimed to inherit the secrets and the chivalry of the Templar Knights. Uh, but Jure and Dimambro mostly liked how they attracted money and how, they, <laughs> and how they groomed and cultivated the rich who had all that money. So these two did something a tad uncommon for cults we've looked at. They catered almost exclusively to the rich and connected, where, as we know, other charismatic leaders, it was a smart move until it wasn't. Um, Other charismatic leaders like Jim Jones and Joseph Smith found eager recruits among the desperate and the illiterate and impoverished classes. The Solar Temple wanted real money and power. And so fancy rituals and costumes in forest retreats in the Alps was more their style. Once again, very eyes wide shut. Hmm. You don't give the code word to concierge Templar themed sex parties to just anyone, right? Right. M- motherfuckers get the code word after the money is wired to a numbered account in Zurich and not before. So, what was this? What, what, what did the secret order believe in? What was the goal? According to one survivor, and that word is going to have meaning soon, it was establishing the correct notions of authority and power in the world which sounds a little spooky to me. Uh, but they were and, also... And just esoteric enough that you, it doesn't mean anything. Right, exactly. It's like sort of Nazi, and there were actually there's some <laughs> weird neo-Nazi uh, connections to it that don't matter so much, but are hardly surprising. So um, they were obsessed with a, a great future environmental catastrophe, 
that's never going to happen uh, because <laughs> Trump told me so. Uh, right. And they wanted to prepare the world for the second coming of Christ, who would rule forever as a solar king. And they were pretty sure they could unify all of Christianity and Islam, a modest goal that a cult based on the imagery of Christian crusaders came so very close to achieving. Um, <laughs> so they saw themselves as the future leaders of a great transition that would occur after the massive environmental disaster. So basically a new age millennialist cult. Uh, and after, uh, after they assisted humanity through this turbulence, flying saucers would whisk them away to their great reward. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that, yep, everything touches, baby. Uh, for, for the great reward in the binary star system. Serious. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, I'm so enough, happy. I am oh. so happy right now. I just I'm, <laughs> I want to join. I don't have the money uh, to. I'm going to change that for you. So oddly enough, that was the same star that the mass suicidists of Heaven's Gate were heading for, as discussed in episode 61. Again, more yarn for our sad, dumb sweater. <laughs> so anyway, something did go very wrong indeed. And it's not totally clear how things fully fell apart. But the Canadian government was looking into money laundering charges against the group in Quebec, where one of the founders was caught trying to buy guns and silencers, a thing that can actually cause shame for a person in Canada, which is crazy. <laughs> um, but, but those seem like pretty minor, even classically typical issues for even a mainstream religious group, right? Like being shitty with money and buying weapons. It's like, bring a book, snoozer. Um, so anyway... The following series of events were only put together after a long series of investigations, but it seems sometime in October of 1994, DiMambro declared the three-month-old son of two members to be the biblical Antichrist. Oh, Somebody. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. you, you have made bad choices, my friend. Yeah. This is well, not, that's not going to go well. <laughs> they're going to make worse choices. So somebody, it's believed on DiMambro's order, killed the boy's parents, stabbing oh. his father over 50 times and smashing his head in with a blunt object Whoa, before Jesus. driving a wooden stake through the baby's heart, <gasps> which Holy was only shit. discovered after they found the infant's body behind a water heater. <clears throat> so perhaps sensing that this sort of thing would affect the wrong kind of attention. I'm, ju I'm uh, just going to tell you that the, the room over in this part of the world just got very chilly. I'm just yeah. Letting yep. you know. Oh, you took what? the air out of it. Yeah, most def. It, uh, yeah, it got pretty bad for these folks. So, yeah. uh, sensing, of course, that this would attract the wrong kind of attention, DeMambro and several followers had a ritual last supper at a high-end restaurant. Uh, following that began an insane cluster of suicides and murders in Switzerland and Quebec. Uh, in in uh, Chery and Selvan, Switzerland, 15 of the inner circle poisoned themselves while 38 were shot or asphyxiated. <clears throat> Many of these bodies were found in a secret mirror-lined underground ritual chamber in their robes, lying in a perfect circle with a plastic bag over and a bullet hole in their heads. Mm -hmm. uh, other victims, including the bodies of several children, were scattered around uh, local ski chalets, and toxicology found most of the victims, including the children, had been heavily drugged prior to death. And to make matters somehow worse, most of the crime scenes were either set on fire before the last members killed themselves or timed devices did it. So wow. s several farewell notes were found saying they were anxious to flee the hypocrisies of this world, which, you know, we all are, you crazy fuckers. That's what booze is for. Right. <laughs> Lunatics. So... <clears throat> A year later, a murder-suicide of 16 members occurred in the mountains of France. They were laid out in the, the shape of a star, and like the others, drugged, asphyxiated, shot, and burned, like, you know, Rasputin level, make sure they're dead kind of thing. <laughs> um, two years after that, in 1997, firemen responded to a small house fire in Quebec in which they found five more ritually dead Solar Temple members. Uh, they also discovered three teenage children of two of the deceased heavily drugged but alive in a shed behind the house. Somehow uh, they had convinced their parents they needed to live. Oh, um, wow. So that's really a, a, an amazing silver lining to this whole cloud, don't you think, guys? Well, I, uh, <laughs> the thing is that like a lot of these cults, you hear a lot about um, suicides, mm. sometimes murder, whatever. But 
Like, just leave the kids out of it. Yeah. It's so much funnier if you, if you just kill yourself, is what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you do you, like literally. Yeah. Well, with and the, I got to say, bullet. we cover so many of these cults that are American-born. Mm. It always kind of warms my heart when <laughs> one comes from, especially, you know, the, the arrogant French. Yeah, you're just like us. Yeah. Yeah. It, the, the Swiss. Derp, Who knew? Derp is derp the world over. We're fine. Yeah. And Even in Canada. Yeah. Even in Canada. So there's a crazy aside that these kids, once they kind of were stabilized after their weird drug pro- issue, um, were able to tell police that the dead cult members had turned their incendiary device on and off five or six times over the preceding days because they were agonizing whether or not this was the right moment to fly off to Sirius together. Oh. So that's You know, you do, you do have to pick... It, t- timing is everything. Am I right? You, you, well... You don't want to show up uninvited at the like, and and then they're in the middle of a party, and you're mm. all you, it, it. It's embarrassing. Fashionably frankly. late at at the speed flying saucers move, you have to time the departure perfectly, right? So, yeah. so all told, that's seventy four violent deaths as a result of the Order of the Solar Temple. And for those keeping score at home, it's definitely not the highest number for a religious group going just a tad further than most with their obsession with a glorious afterlife, but. That would probably be the Thuggies would be in the lead, and then probably the People's Temple after that. But it's better than the Manson family or the family of David. So it's a good middle-of-the-field body count. Right, guys? If we're <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I feel like we're doing okay. <clears throat> this Because if we're becoming a sports show, we might as well report on the sport we know. <laughs> on the yeah, stats. G- yeah, exactly. Yeah, the fucking nightmare. So We're going uh, to be turning into one of those fucking murder podcasts if, if we're not careful. Yeah. Then well, we'll have all the millennials I listening think to us. we done turned into that long ago. <laughs> we got turnt. <laughs> So uh, apparently there are a few members, uh, unbelievably, of the Solar Temple left. Uh, And apparently the police, especially in Quebec, check in on them during solstices and equinox, which is their preferred flying saucer embarkation via self-immolation dates. But uh, thankfully it's been pretty pretty quiet since uh, 1997. So if I can offer any advice for eager spiritual seekers out there, once you've got the robe and the special sword... And the password to the sex party with masks has been DM'd to you. And it seems like it's going to be an amazing night of chanting around the chalice. And then a guy asks you to kill a three-month-old baby with a wooden stake. Give it a rethink, okay? Yeah. You know, like, you know, maybe say uh, you left your baby stake in the car and go call the cops, yeah? At that point in time, I think it's safe to call it a cult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, I think we, they've made it. They've crossed that <laughs> threshold. Yeah, yeah so, it does uh, seem like it, what's funny is that, you know, it's one of those things where you talk about the 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 turning, you know, putting the, the frog in the pot of water and then turning on the heat mm-hmm. as it gets hotter and hotter. You don't necessarily notice that it's getting cultier and cultier uh-huh. in here. But uh, but yeah, I mean, when it comes time to kill somebody's baby or <laughs> even just to kill anybody, frankly, you might yeah. want to reconsider. Right. It yeah, might. If, you're, if you look like a, a druid in <laughs> red silk. And you're in a basement, a secret basement mirrored ceremonial chamber, and there's a baby on an altar, and you've got a wooden stake. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe call maybe call your dad. I don't it know. Might, so. It might be a good time to sit down and just do a little bit of meditation. Do an inventory on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> take, take some time for you. Hey, before you, know you take go, that next step, go and let the Scientologists audit you a minute and just see <laughs> yeah. see if that works. Out. Or come come over to our place. We've got an e meter. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we we will can do exactly you. the same thing. So anyway, <laughs> right. guys, that's the Solar Temple. Live Ugh. it, love it, Woo. learn it. Wow. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to shake off all of the oogie and move on. Yeah, let's move on. (laughs) 